Hello, white people. Irrational fear of risk lessens our enjoyment of life. Living fully means taking risks and it's pointless trying to hide away from them. I work with radiation protection at UCC and I have been approached in the past by people who were worried about radioactive emissions from Sellafield and who puffed away on cigarettes while they questioned me. We tend to react in an exaggerated and sometimes irrational manner to rare and unfamiliar risks and to be blasé about familiar risks and about natural risks. What might you feel concerned about when driving to the airport to travel by aircraft? You might worry that the aircraft will crash or be blown up by terrorists, but you probably don't even think about crashing the car, which is a far more likely eventuality than an air crash or a terrorist incident. Human attitude to risk was formed over millions of years as our brains evolved to cope with the risks we most frequently encountered, i.e. attack by dangerous animals, extreme weather, physical dangers such as floods, great heights, forest fires, and so on. Over our long evolutionary history, we would not even have been conscious of rare and unfamiliar risks or long-term natural risks such as overexposure to sunlight and so on. We all know now that Smoking cigarettes is deadly dangerous. This message has been pounded into our heads incessantly for the past 20 years. Each pack of cigarettes carries a message in large capital letters that tells us smoking these will kill you. And yet, 24% of Irish people still smoke cigarettes. We don't worry much about familiar risks. Other dangerous activities that we commonly indulge in without worry include sunbathing, inhaling higher than average levels, of the natural radioactive gas radon, climbing ladders, riding bicycles without reflectors or helmets, taking part in certain sports activities such as boxing, rugby, skiing, etc., even adventure activities such as mountain climbing or undertaking extreme expeditions do not unduly worry us. And then consider the following example of risks that we worry about a lot, but from which under normal circumstances there is little to no There is little or no danger. Radiation from mobile phone masts, radioactive emissions from Sellafield, immunization of infants, air travel, germ-laden domestic surfaces that require vigilant spraying with germicides lest they sicken the toddler and so on. Studies have shown that our attitude to risk is determined by how we respond to a limited number of factors. We have a positive attitude toward the risk associated with a particular situation, think it is less risky, when we agree with the first factor of each of the following paired factors and we have a negative attitude toward the risk when we agree with the second factor. The risk involved is voluntary-involuntary. I understand the risk, don't understand the risk, the risk risk is familiar, the risk is familiar, unfamiliar, I trust those responsible, don't trust. I control the situation, don't have control. The risk is natural, e.g. radon. The risk is artificial or man-made. I receive a benefit from undertaking the risk. I receive no benefit. It is interesting to run a few risks through these factors. Example, air travel, nuclear power, and so on. Rare risks that we don't really understand tend to provoke an irrational response. For example, the 9-11 Twin Tower terrorist attack provoked some highly questionable responses in America and internationally. We are all now subjected to intensive security checks at airports. Now, let me uh, make this one current day. For example, the beer flu provoked some highly questionable responses in America and internationally. We are all now on global lockdown. Huh, you see any any, uh, resemblance to that? We have to stay in our homes. As I reported recently in this column, there is no evidence that this frantic airport security reduces the risk of terrorist activity. Indeed, there is good reason to think that it is useless. Everyone is treated as a potential terrorist and the total security effort is divided over a huge number of people, the vast majority of whom are harmless. The terrorist, in extremely rare occurrence, receives no more attention than I do. Airport security should be based largely on intelligence so that more attention can be directed against the real threat. In the developed world, we are forgetting how to live with unavoidable risk and uncertainty. We have conquered most of the major risks that plague previous generations, such as the major infectious diseases. But instead of breathing a sigh of relief and relaxing, we now worry about very low risk activities, like immunizing babies despite 
scientific assurances that these activities are unsafe. Well, I'm just going to disagree on that one, but okay, well, moving on here. Being alive is risky, and there is no way around this. Even if you stayed in bed the whole time in order to eliminate risk, you would not succeed. Your muscles would waste away from disuse, and an aircraft might crash into your house. Elimination of risk is impossible to achieve, yet we demand this impossible standard in many areas. The only sensible way to live is to make efforts to understand the risks, take action to sensibly minimize them, acknowledge that risk cannot be eliminated, and get on with it. In my little city just north of Portland, Oregon, we're the next city north. I don't say it because it's the same as a Canadian town, and people think I already have a Canadian accent, and they think I live in Canada, but I don't live in Canada. I live in the U.S. Anyway, so in my town, we've had two deaths, and I'm telling you, this virus is uh, fake as the day is long. There's no way that they can suddenly come up with a diagnostic tool. This disease was declared, what, at the beginning of the year? And then all of a sudden, now they have ways to test for it. They don't have ways to test for it. It's completely fake. The labs that create this, there's there's only like five labs, and none of them are, you know, like they're independent of each other. So there's no way for any of these labs to verify that any of these tests are accurate. And look at the hysteria that has been created. All right, so this is Chuck's. I went to Chuck's yesterday, Chuck's Produce. And it's a little store. It's got, I think it's got two stores in my area. I don't think it's, I don't even, I think it might just be something local. I haven't really checked it out. But it's a fairly small chain of stores. They uh, sell cheap produce. But they had water. They were the only place that had water. I was there a few days ago, and it was completely stocked. And I went and got more meat. And um, now it's just about out of everything. Look at that. This is where the tofu lives. <laughs> People bought up the tofu. <laughs> but they didn't buy the other fake crap. They didn't buy the fake cheese. <laughs> and then there's the butter and margarine. You know, people are buying up the staples. And it's pretty serious. People are scared. And they have every right to be scared. You know, the media and the government were supposed to trust them. But, you know, we hand over our money to be terrorized. <laughs> The government and media are terrorizing people. And uh, let's see, this is Fred Meyer or Kroger, for those of you who live out of state. Kroger, Fred Meyer is owned by Kroger. Fred Meyer used to be um, a locally owned store until he got bought out by the corporation and the dish soap. But this virus is fake, and all it is is playing on our fears, just like September 11th. Now we know that September 11th wasn't fake. It was very real indeed, but we know, those of you who are in the truth community know that 9-11 was a PSYOP. Those buildings did not come down because of planes. Those buildings came down because they were wired and bombed or whatever. They were they um, are wired with explosives. Anyway, so this virus is the same as a terrorist attack. People are terrified and we are giving up our right to congregate and that's a violation of the First Amendment. You know, m Martial law has not been technically declared. And people are acting like martial law has been declared. And we are being told to stay in our homes, to stay away from people, not more than just a few feet, no more than groups, no more larger than 10 people. Give me a break, you guys. This is absolute authoritarianism and communism. And uh, President Trump just signed a War Powers Act, which gave him the right, the government anyway, the right to uh, nationalize industry. So you guys, we are officially in a communist country. The alarms need to be going off and you all need to be prepared to protest. You need to be prepared to go to the streets and you need to protest because there's no reason that our rights need to be violated. And you bitches who tolerate the extreme security because of terrorist attacks from 9-11. And you notice we haven't had any terrorist attacks in a long time. And we're not because they were never real. All these terrorist attacks are fake as the day is long, just like this virus is fake. It's just meant to control people. I personally absolutely refuse to hunker down and stay put. I'm actually traveling out east. I'm going to go to the state of Michigan. I've got family out there that's in critical condition. I'm going to leave in a few days. I've already spent a billion dollars getting my car fixed. 
The only reason it was really expensive is because I just don't drive that much and I've been putting off these repairs and now that I want to travel cross country because I'm not traveling on an airplane where they're recirculating germs and that, I don't think that's irrational. Have you ever been on an airplane? If it's on the ground and I've been on a grounded airplane, that air is stale and it's hot and it's disgusting. Anyway, I'm going to be taking my little puppy dogs with me too, my little pee pee dogs. Gosh, they pee on everything. Anyway, if you feel sorry for me and you want to donate to your favorite YouTuber, the links are in the description. All right, white people, that's the damage for today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your support. I look forward to your comments below.